Scientists are makers, and the tools they use for research and experimentation often don't come off the shelf. Join my friends Kishore Hari and Indre Viscontis as they visit the labs and workshops where scientists engineer custom tools and technologies to better understand our world. This is Science in Progress. Hey, test and peeps, it's Adam Savage, and I am behind the California Academy of Sciences, specifically the Steinhardt Aquarium, and I'm about to meet. I'm going to have a meeting with their giant Pacific octopus, or GPO to those in the know. Let's go. All right, Margarita, we are about to meet the giant Pacific octopus, or as you guys refer to it, the GPO? GPO, yeah. GPO. Um, how is this meeting gonna go? You have a protocol, right? Uh, yes, we do. So we uh, are gonna do a training session with the GPO. I have a station that I'm going to put in the water, and that's to let it know where we want it to come to in order to receive food, and we're also gonna do some other stimulation with it. So I'll put in the uh, station, and then it'll come over. We're gonna reward it for coming over. With uh, some with, shrimp with or some, some food. food? Okay. Yeah, today it'll be eating uh, shrimp, uh, mackerel, and some capelin. Lovely. Uh, it'll come over, and then we're going to do a tactile session, which will involve uh, rubbing the arms, rubbing the head, and rubbing the mantle. Getting him used to, is it him or her? It is a him, Okay. Yes. Getting him used to being touched? Yes. Is this because he is used in demonstrations for visitors to the museum or um, just to get him to be easier to handle for you guys? It's a little bit of both. Uh, we want him to be able to come out uh, if we want to do a member speed or something like that and just to be more visible in general. But more so it's in order for him to come to station and so we can uh, weigh him, take him out uh, if we need to weigh him. Okay. Uh, a lot of times we will base the uh, amount of food on weight, uh, and just to be able to handle him in case there are any husbandry uh, issues that we need to address. So he'll be able to get used to being touched. And so you'll, you'll pet his tentacles, you'll his pet his arms, arms. you'll arms, pet his yes. arms, <laughs> and his head? Yeah, well his the mantle. mantle. The yes. mantle, sorry. Mantle, a little bit between the eyes, okay. and just pretty much everywhere along his body. And is he likely to be uh, welcoming and, and, and uh, interactive? Uh, yes, I've been working with this one for a few months, so he's pretty used to interaction, so he should come over for us. Fantastic. And how old is how old is this guy? Um, don't really know. Uh, we've had him for only a couple of months, but he's probably within the one to two year age. Do you notice as a handler that they have different personalities? I do. Uh, it's hard to say why, uh, but I just notice some tend to be a little bit more shy, some tend to be a little bit more outgoing. Uh, they, some may recognize me, yeah. I'm not sure, or recognize my shirt. Oh, so um, do you give this guy puzzles or things to solve? Uh, right now, since he's only, we've only had him for about three months, we're just doing uh, some light tactile stationing. Uh, I will give him things like dog toys, uh, where he can get food out of the uh, compartment. And also ice cubes, they like to play with ice cubes. They like to play with ice cubes? Yes. So you give him an ice cube? Yeah, I'll give him a cube of sea ice, so sometimes I will freeze a dog toy in it or any other kind of toy, and they tend to like it. Just like a dog likes trying to get peanut butter out of a dog toy. Exact same thing. Wow. <laughs> Good morning, Rich. Good morning, Adam. Thank you so much for having me over. Our pleasure. Um, I can't help but notice we have an octopus here. We do. What kind of octopus is this? This is a Hawaiian day octopus, an octopus cyania. They're actually from all over the Pacific into the Indian Ocean. They have a really, really wide range. And this is a, what I call an octopus's octopus. This is, when someone describes an octopus as being, uh, seeming intelligent and being interactive and being strong and wanting to escape, this is the one. This is the guy? Th this one, they're big, they seem really smart, uh, and they're really, really strong. So they'll they'll do naughty things when you don't want them to. Oh, cool. You know, I keep noticing he's watching us. He he's is. keeping one eye on us the entire time. So he wants to know what's going on, uh, and he wants some kind of interaction. If we have a tank that we're keeping an octopus in that doesn't have this much foot traffic by it, yeah. we'll set up an iPad and have them watch videos. No way. Yeah, yeah, because it keeps them kind of engaged and it gets them used to people walking by, if they're eventually gonna be on display, they can't be scared of this. Right. So we'll actually, uh, 
the last one we were doing that too, it showed, showed a lot of debates, a lot of Christopher Hitchens debates actually, because it's people standing there gesticulating. Oh my gosh. Um, and it, it tends to acclimate them to being on display. The whole reason I'm here is because you guys tweeted on the Academy's Twitter account yeah. that octopuses need puzzles to solve or they get bored. Yeah. So tell me about this. Yeah. They, in the wild, they're constantly looking for food right. or constantly looking not to be eaten. So they have a huge seeming intelligence. And I want to say seeming because it's so hard to quantify what that really means. And right? it, it, this is also because we still don't understand a lot about how they think and how they cogitate and move. And Absolutely. Okay. We don't understand a lot about how we do that. So, or how pigs do it or a dog does it. Right, so trying right. to get this alien on our planet to yeah. get a grasp of what it's doing, especially when it's got the big eyes, so you anthropomorphize it much more, right. uh, which is bizarre because the body is so unanthropomorphic, but we really do want to feel like these guys are smart and they're looking at you. And they definitely seem to be doing that. Right. They recognize you. My wife, when we have them at home, she starts the mantra, shrimp come with people, people come with shrimp. Because as soon as you walk into the room, if you have cuttlefish or octopus, they'll all come to the front and start looking at the front of the class because so they know you're feeding them. So do you notice a difference in them? What is the difference that you notice in them if they have toys to play with or puzzles to solve as opposed to not? They, if they have puzzles, they're less, uh, I'm gonna use the word less desperate. That's the wrong word because they're not really desperate. But they're, they're calmer, they're out more, they're checking things out more, but they're not, trying to control things. Mm. So if, if you give it puzzles at the bottom, this species at least, right. um, they tend not to try to escape as much. If you feed them from the top, what, what people used to do is right. throw food in, or the octopus would come to the top and it's really cute. This and is then what happened the first the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, if you do that with a dog, oh, it's cute when the dog jumps up and barks, I'm gonna feed it because it's cute. Right. The dog is always going to jump up and bark. So you get, if you, uh, train them that the top is where interesting thing happens then they're just and they gonna... get a reward that's what they do all the time so if we train them that the food comes from the bottom and rewards come from the bottom and interesting things happen down here right they stay down here more so what constitutes a puzzle for an octopus a puzzle could be anything that they have to do something with to get the food so um we have some glass tubes i made that we put the food in so that's a puzzle they have to figure out that the food's in the tube and then figure out where to go into the tube to get it. Right. Um, this ship here is a puzzle. So it's weighted down, because why wouldn't you feed an octopus from a pirate ship? Um, yeah. It's weighted down and it's got a trap door in it. And you put the shrimp in the trap, the food in the trap door. Where is, where is that? There's a trap door on in the, the top. Side. Oh, okay. Uh, and so they will grab it and manipulate, manipulate it. it, find where the food is and pull the food out. Okay. Uh, the classic thing is a jar. Uh, so you can put a jar with a lid on it, and they can, and they can unscrew it. Online. You have to train them to do it. They can't. They don't just walk up to it and figure it out. So you, you how, do you, to, how do you train an octopus to open a jar? The first thing you do is you train them that food comes in the jar. Okay. So that's why I'm doing that with the tubes as well. Food comes in the tubes. Once they get that, you can do more to it. Then, and you smear the thing with uh, a with, trail with the shred trail because okay. they feel it with their suckers, and then they. Okay, that's food. They right, know food comes right, in there. Right. Then you put a lid on it. I usually put a lid with holes in it, so they whatever, can, smell, they can it. smell it through. And then you barely put the lid on. So they come through, they feel the lid, they pull the lid off. And then over the course of, depending on the animal, days to weeks, you start tightening it up a little bit more. And eventually you can get it pretty tight and they'll, they know how to open it. Wow. Uh, on some of the bigger octopuses, uh, it's hard to tell if they're actually opening it or if they're just grabbing it and just pulling the threads apart. So if you use a Nalgene bottle, which is flexible, um, they're strong enough that it may be that they're just yanking the no threads apart. Way. Yeah. This one, um, I made a, a jar cam for this one uh, with a camera at the bottom, which was a whole bit of engineering because you put something new in there, everything's a puzzle. Right. They pull the camera off, and so I eventually had to really tape the camera on and close all the holes because they would get under it, yank it. Oh my goodness. Uh, but we eventually got some footage from underneath of it, spinning the jar lid off and going in and getting it. Wow. So, because I wanted to know, is it actually opening the jars or just yanking it? Yeah. Because... Uh, I can't believe they're strong enough to do that. They are so strong. So on their arms, 
Uh, they can have up to 200 suckers on each arm. Right. And each sucker is really strong. You know, the smaller suction cups are strong too. So right. the bigger they get, even stronger they are. So they can put a lot of force on something, especially if they get all eight arms going together. Now, I heard this correctly, you're a glass blower. So I am. You, you've hand blown the tubes and that jar in there with the ring around the inside. Yeah, yeah. So it was, um, if you need something, why not fabricate it, right? right? So, and I have access to a glass video, so whatever I can fabricate, I can. Um, we wanted dens that you could see through. Right. So if you put a flower pot on display, it's nice, but it's a flower pot, you can't see through it. Yeah. Or a shell is even worse, because then they go in the shell and you see their eyes pop up and down and that's it. Right. But a clear glass thing, you can see them. Now I'm gonna assume uh, that whatever puzzles you give them have to be soft edged with no like screws sticking out and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so glass is perfect. Uh, because you can finish it really you smooth. You can finish it and make it smooth. Yeah. And it's not toxic. So metals are no no. Right. Um, acrylic. Uh, is acrylic fine. is fine. Okay. Glued acrylic is fine. Um, you know, with the solvent welding. Yep, yep. Um, you, silicone is fine, but uh, they could probably pull that apart. And you also want to make sure you use silicone that doesn't have any uh, mold inhibitors in it. Sure. Okay. Um, and then anything you're doing, especially acrylic or any kind of rubber or anything like that, I like to have it soak in salt water for 24 hours. Sure. So whatever VOCs burn off and salt water is pretty caustic so that'll take care of it right yeah I was thinking along the lines of acrylic only just Acrylic's acrylic great. and solvent glue because I I know it really well it's shapes I can play with yeah as I'm thinking as I'm thinking about toys or puzzles to make for them is there is there an aspect that uh, is there a direction you want to give me a little shove into or, or something to think about yeah they they um, naturally use all their arms to feel things so a little opening for the arm tip to go in right. uh, and let them feel around in there, that can be a good way to go. Okay. They can also backfire because they can grab whatever the food item is and then pull, pull it, it out through, and then yeah. try to eat through a tiny hole. Um, and I think the other thing to think of is, you know, is it possible to do it in stages? Sometimes you have to give them uh, an intermediate phase. Right, right. Uh, just right. like I was talking about with the jar. Yeah. Um, so yeah, something that they can, I don't want to, I want to see what you're going to come up right, with more than, right, cool. than telling you what works. Totally down with that. God, it's so beautiful. All right, so there you have it. That is, without a doubt, the coolest information gathering field trip I have ever participated in. And I think that's saying a lot. Uh, it's now up to me to go back to my shop and think of some ways to keep these octopuses' brains activated. I have no idea what I'm going to start building. But uh, I'm gonna think about it for a few days and then get into it. See you guys there. I'm gonna build a little bit of it first and show you a mock-up of how it's working and then we'll go from there. Good, good, let's do it. First things first, everything I'm going to make for these octopuses has to have smooth, rounded edges so that they can't pinch or hurt themselves on anything that I'm making. So, got a little bit of sharp edge on this piece of acrylic tube that I'm gonna start working with. I'm gonna sand that off and fix it up. Not bad, not bad. All right, we're gonna clean it up even more. When you're cleaning up acrylic, you can sand it, uh, but you can get it even smoother than sanding with a technique I'm about to show you. Uh, but first, I'm gonna need to make a sanding uh, platform. And I'm gonna use a couple sheets of 180 grit sandpaper for this. Put some spray glue on their back sides. Let that set a minute. Put that up, put that there. there. Okay, right. So what I want across this is a perfectly flat plane because I'm gonna glue part of it to some acrylic and I want the other part to be soft. In both cases, I'm gonna prepare both sides the same way. Uh, I've got two pieces of sandpaper with spray glue on them and a nice flat piece of board. I think this is an old piece of Ikea hardware. 
Uh, and I'm just gonna stick these down to that. And I'm gonna stick this down to that. Yeah. What's that called? It's called a brayer. I hold this down and I do this. Yeah. Now my thing is, uh, I have a circle, but I don't know where the center is. I'm gonna use a little trick to find center of this circle. It's a pretty cool one. Check this out. That. To find the center of a circle is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, what you do is set your, set your uh, digital calipers to, let's say, four inches. That's reasonable for this, uh, this execution. And what I'm gonna do is, I want a line exactly four inches long that intersects the side of the circle. Now that that's four inches long, I'm going to make a line, I'm going to measure its center point, and that's right there. Just to double check, yep, exactly right. Now here's the thing, because this line bisects the circle at two points, and I've drawn a perpendicular line from its center, I know that this line crosses through center. So all I need to do is do the same thing a second time. Here we go. Set my micrometer to four inches. Draw the line. Center is there. Draw the line. Now, that should technically be the perfect center of the circle. Isn't that cool? I think so. I actually figured that out myself about 15 years ago. It turns out to be one of Euclid's original elements. I'm not saying I'm smart or anything. I probably remembered this from high school geometry. Oh, you're not sure that I'm right about this? Well, let's double check my work with this, a compass. All right, I'm going to put the middle on center. I'm gonna put the outside, ah, I'm gonna put the middle of this on the alleged center. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, so what do I have there? I have the radius of my circle. That makes finding the center of my other circle even easier. Watch this. I simply go like that, because I know that's a radius, and I do another one off the edge of the circle. Oh. There we go. So my center of the circle is right there. I wonder if one can drill acrylic with a forcer bit. It's not something I've tried. Um, let me look at my other hole saws just to make sure. I'm nervous about this. It's a lot to ask of my drill press. But if I've got some water, we should be okay. By the way, when you're cutting acrylic, um, water is your cooling fluid. Indeed. Here we go. Got my acrylic, got my water. Oh, here. Sorry, Joey. All right. I think I wanna go low speed on this. That sounded rough. I wonder how that worked on the other side. Let's see here. Hmm, it could be prettier, but that should still work for me. Not bad. I'm gonna put a nice smooth piece of wood under the next piece to, to avoid that same issue. Hey, 
If I could go back and tell my young maker self anything at all, it would be use more cooling fluid. I think that one was much cleaner. Oh, yeah. Oh, much better. Bellissimo. Um, I see that I've made a little bit of a mistake, and that is that um, this acrylic I thought was clear is in fact matte on one side and shiny on the other. I may have to remake these, but it's... I've gone a bit down this path, so I'm gonna continue down it and see if I can fix it. Here we go. One down, one to go. I told up. <laughs> Gotta do it again. <laughs>